Travco is a company that is uh, its activities are around uh, hospitality, tourism, tourism transport, uh, related businesses to the airline business, and uh, Nile cruising. So as a as a group, we are market leaders in the region. We uh, we own and operate about 50 hotels which we built in the last 15 years. And we also operate and own a fleet of Nile cruises, which operate between Luxor and Aswan. And uh, again, they cater for different customers of different categories, and uh, uh, we run them ourselves. We own them and run them ourselves. We are also affiliated, or we are owners of uh, the German company Steigenberger Hotels, which is uh, DH Hospitality. Deutsche Hospitality is a German company which operates 130 hotels in, in Europe. And this is part of our group as well. Very impressive. Um, I think people may not be as familiar with your hospitality group in Egypt, the Jazz, with one Z at the end, Jazz Hotels. Uh, tell us a bit about that. Uh, Jazz Hotels is a company that we created and uh, it's a brand that we uh, created uh, in Egypt 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And um, it was created as a result of demand. Uh, the market was looking for uh, uh, first class upscale hotels. And uh, we had the, uh, the know-how and we had the customer to fill the hotel. And so we increased our portfolio over time, over the, the last 12 years, from just two, three hotels to uh, the, 50, the 50 hotels. And a few more coming in the next uh, one or two years. How many rooms in total? Jazz, without the, without the ships, is uh, 13,000 rooms. 13,000 rooms with an average of three beds per room. You know, we can say we have 39,000 beds, 13,000 rooms. And if you add the, the rooms on the Nile cruises, that's another thousand and a half, one and a half thousand. So total is uh, 14,500 rooms. And the Travco uh, DMC uh, is, yes, is actually yeah. handling inbound coaches, yeah, guides, the DMC etc. is the uh, largest uh, in Egypt. It's also the largest in, in the Middle East. We have uh, a fleet of uh, nearly 800 coaches of different sizes. And we operate in Egypt, and we operate in, uh, Jor in uh, Jordan, we operate in Oman, and of course in the United Arab Emirates, and uh, opening soon in Sri Lanka as well. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. Sri Lanka's been on your <laughs> It's eyesight. coming up, it's coming oh, up. Oh, it is unbelievable how fast. Yeah, it's coming up, yeah, it's doing well. On top of that, uh, we started a, a, a line of uh, hotels, uh, what we call boutique upscale hotels, and that's the, it's called the Vakaru, and we started by building a, the first Vakaru Hotel on Vakaru Island in the Maldives. How do you spell that? It's uh, V-A-K-A-R-U, Vakaru Maldives. That's our first hotel of the Vakaru chain. That's an upscale hotel of boutique hotels, not too many rooms. And we, we built it on an island in the southern atoll of uh, Maldives. Uh, a beautiful property. And, uh, let's say it's our... Uh, state-of-the-art hotel. So we are diverse, but we started off in Egypt and we diverse in Europe and now we're diversing into other countries as well, starting with, uh, with the Maldives. That's very, very exciting. Now, th as far as the Egypt business is concerned, between the political problems and things, you go through ups and downs. Yeah. And even, even with those challenges, you survived and, and grown. We have survived because uh, the business never really stopped. We had also a very close eye on costs, and very, very tight uh, cost control, and we had very low uh, bank leverage. So we were, uh, although there was, uh, business was really down, we, we had uh, little pressure from the banks because of our debt structure, which was very minimal. This helped us uh, survive without, uh, without a problem. We also, uh, we also, uh, created a, a business that's outgoing, outgoing travel, because the, Egypt is a, mm. is a big market. A lot of Egyptians like to travel, so they were traveling abroad or traveling to our, hotel, our own hotels. 
So we encourage local tourism, local tourism, people that want to spend their holidays within Egypt. We, we, because we have a very good name, a very good reputation, we were able to sell our hotels to the local market. On top of that, we had the outgoing trips, uh, outgoing travel, which is a division of our Trafco called Trafco Holidays. So, uh, very successful brand and uh, and very successful uh, operation, profit-wise. This helped us, you know, overcome the the problems when we when the country was running into the political difficulties. How's the UK market performing and the continental European major markets performing for you? The UK market uh, to Egypt was focusing on the Sinai, Sharm el Sheikh. Sharm el Sheikh was the top destination for the British tourist, and Urgada came second, but in no way, in, not the same level. The amount of tourists that were coming, let's say we had, uh, Egypt was getting about the one and a half million tourists from the UK. Uh, I would say 90% of those tourists were going to Sharm el Sheikh. When Sharm el Sheikh was closed, due to the travel advisory that was issued by the, the foreign state, uh, the, the Ministry of Foreign uh, Affairs of uh, the UK, the, uh, the business co collapsed completely, but because there was demand, the British started to go to Urgada instead. And so, and so Urgada was a nice substitute and uh, has not yet reached the level of charm, but it's on its way to become uh, an important so. UK is our important destination as far as Uganda is concerned. The same applies to Ukraine and uh, Germany. A lot of Germans going to Uganda, a lot of Germans going to China. Ahmed El Chati, Chairman and CEO of Trafco Group, thank you very much. Thank you.